All right, we're going to go ahead and call this committee to order. Diana, would you please call roll? Representative Berger? Here. Representative Nemec? Here. Representative Obermuller? Here. Representative O'Hearn? Here. Representative Pendergraft? Representative Smith? Here. Representative Stivar? Present. Representative Wiley? Chairman Brown? Here. All right. And seeing no um, sponsor for this particular bill right now, my guess is they're probably still stuck in session. So we'll go ahead and do you, do you know the bill? Okay. Your name's on it. I know. A bit. Yeah. So I was just going to say, I'll take the bullets, start out with. I um, know a little bit about it. Okay. I mean, I, yeah. Um, pretty simple build, to be honest with you guys. Um, really, what we're looking at doing here is creating a new license plate yet again. Um, this one would allow multi purpose vehicles. So anything that you see with the MPV plate, um, this would provide um, the opportunity for a handicap sticker to be. Um, or a handicap placard to be initiated on there. Um, and that's basically all that they're looking at doing. Um, it would also allow uh, motorcycles to carry this as well, but, oh, and there's our Senator. So we were just muddling our way right on through this. So Senator, please, at your leisure, you're more than welcome. I just explained the general basics as you've got two co-sponsors on this bill here. So, <laughs> Senator, please, when you are ready, just introduce yourself for the record and let us know what the bill's doing and why we need it. You betcha. Senator Wendy Schuler, Senate District 15. Uh, I didn't bring my notes. That's all right. This is a really simple bill. Um, I had a constituent that contacted me um, via the county uh, clerk and was a little incensed. Uh, he, he went out and spent a whole lot of money on a... Uh, off-road vehicle, and uh, his wife um, is is quite disabled, and he was so looking forward uh, to being, you know, retired and being able to take his wife on all the wonderful trails that we have throughout our state. And he said, um, he said to the clerk, he said, "There's no license plates for multi-purpose vehicles," and she said, "No, we have them for you know motorcycles, we have them for cars and trucks." So that folks that are disabled can can park in handicap areas, and uh, she said, "I don't know why we've never. We, I guess we've never thought about it." Well, with the influx of all the the OHVs, ATVs, we're seeing so many, obviously, in our counties and our state. Uh, people are wanting. I think it kind of started actually during COVID. That's when I saw a lot of folks starting to buy these wonderful machines, and uh, we're seeing more and more and more of them either being trucked through our state, stopping to get off and visiting our trails or whatever. And I think that's that's what it came to uh, to me, and the and the clerk reached out and said, "Do you have uh, an interest in taking this on?" And I said, "Sure. I think this is this is a constituent bill that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, without having this multi-purpose plate, um, you would probably have to leave her home. I guess it's difficult getting her in and out. But it's, the biggest thing he said is, you know, if I go somewhere where whether it be a trailhead or whether it be uh, in a community." Uh, maybe I've gone from one, you know, trailhead to a, a community and I want to go in and have my wife be able to go uh, into a restaurant or to a restroom or whatever. I'm not going to be able to park close enough for her to be able to, to get there. She, she's unable to walk. And so to me, it was just a no brainer. Um, like I said, I, I probably had my, in my notes, a few other little interesting things, but really the plate will be very simple. It'll be the three by six, um, it's, it's basically the same plate as you'll see um, on a motorcycle. And the other thing I think that's kind of interesting about it is that um, if you are, for instance, if you've had sur surgery, let's say, for instance, on a knee, you can get a temporary handicap plate. This would not be available for those. It would have to be a, a regular multi-purpose plate. And it would say on there, you know, that it is an MPV. And so it's the same size. It's not, we're not creating something new and different. Um, and so it, it's, it's a very simple bill. Um, I, I, I think it's an easy fix to something we probably just have overlooked in the past. And uh, so when I talked to the, to the county folks, I said, we'll see if we can get this through. I don't think it's, it's not going to take a lot of effort and work on our part other than just to get it through the Senate and the House. So um, 
anyway, we, we had very little uh, discussion over on our side. Uh, there really wasn't any um, you know, discussion in terms of conflicts they might see or issues that they saw can come up with this. So uh, with that, I can't think of anything else. Like I said, I didn't bring my notes, so maybe I'm better without them. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you all have and uh, go from there. Okay. I'm going to turn the meeting over here to one of our freshman legislators, and I'm going to have uh, Representative Wiley be chairman for the rest of the meeting, if he'll agree to do that. Sure. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours now. Do we have any questions for the sponsor committee? Um, Representative O'Hearn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, I, I don't drive an ORV, but I assume that the existing placards that say disabled parking only will affect these all the ORVs that are out there running around. Vice Chairman Wiley, uh, Representative Hearn, I, I believe you're correct. Uh, I don't think it's going to take any kind of special designation. Um, like I say, many of these in the past, I will just say this, you know, when you start thinking about multi-purpose vehicles, which is in statute, you sometimes you think about uh, four wheelers and things of that nature. Um, these are more the, the fancy, you know, four seating, you know, ATV side by sides that a lot of folks, you're seeing them hunting, you're seeing them on trails, this, that, and whatever. And so I think that's part of the reason that this has never come up. You know, now they're getting them licensed and they have all the whistles and bells that you can possibly imagine. And they're, they're driving them um, pretty much everywhere, except the interstate. Uh, so uh, with that, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any special designation that we'll need other than just if it's handicapped parking they'll be able to access that. I don't know if that answered your question. Looks like we have two more for Representative Stibar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, they gave us a design of the plate, but on uh, page two, line seven, down to line nine, it says the bucking horse and rider emblem will be on it with a three letter number. This doesn't have the buck and horse. I, again, I haven't. Oh, uh, Vice Chairman Wiley and uh, Representative Stiver, I I have not seen that. So that that's the first I've seen of that. So maybe that happened on the House side. No. Uh, no never okay. Mind. Was, Forget it. I've gone and corrected. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <laughs> Representative Pendergraft, do you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator, I'm, this may be a, something that would be the subject of an entirely different bill, but a special plate like this doesn't do any good if there's no place to park it. Was there some discussion about what might happen, say, at, at mountain lodges? Uh, are they going to be mandated to create special parking for these? Vice Chairman uh, Wiley and Representative Pendergraft. No, I, I don't think anybody will have to require that unless it's already required because of you know OSHA or or the rules that are needed for handicap access. So if there's handicap access that's required for your lodge or your building or your restaurant or your restaurant, then those would already be there. So I wouldn't imagine it would be anything, you know, if it's a private cabin, obviously, or anything that's a private, that isn't required. But anything that's public, uh, if it's, you know, Part of the public arena it is you you are required and you probably notice that everywhere you go there's handicap access so good question though thank you does anybody else have questions for the bringer of the bill okay with that i think we'll i don't see any other representatives in the room or senators so we'll bring it to the the departments thank thank you very much if you'd like to hang out that'd be awesome Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shannon DeGrazio with the Wyoming Department of Transportation Motor Vehicle Services. Uh, YDOT can easily administer this should the bill pass. Um, and like it's been pointed out, uh, it's a lot easier for MPVs for the placards to get stolen. So this will help prevent that. And I guess you guys do have a picture of it. So that's all I have if you have any questions. Are there any, any questions for Mr. DeGrazio? Thank you. Thank you. Any other any other uh, departments or anybody want to comment? With with that, let's open it up to public comment. Is there anybody in the room that would like to speak to the bill? With that, is there anybody online? Uh, committee, what's your what's your pleasure? Move the bill. 
Second. Um, Representative Berger moves the bill. Um, second is Representative O'Hearn. Can we have a, well, let's go through the bill, see if we have any, I think I screwed up. Yeah. Discussion, any amendments? So let's. Did you have an uh, amendment? Thank you. Thank you. So let's go. Let, let's go through it for amendments. Uh, page one. Anybody have an amendment? Page two. Yes. Representative Pentagraph. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In looking at the photo, of what they're proposing with the buffalo, the state flag on there, it did occur to me that according to the way this bill is written now that you could put the buck and horse and rider on top of the, or underneath, if you would, of the, the wheelchair symbol, whatever term you want to use for that. But to me, then it just seems to be a little busy. It is not unusual for, for us to have special plates that don't feature the buck and horse and rider, even though that I love it dearly. But I would suggest on page two, line nine, after the word left, strike followed by the bucking horse and rider emblem in order to keep the plate from becoming too busy, especially on a small three by six. Second. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, um, Representative Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm gonna push back on this. And the only reason is, is because we're, you're actually talking about two different plates. And if you go down a little bit further in the bill, uh, go down to line 17, 18, 19, and 20. This is where the concern of Representative Pendergraft is, is taken care of. But if you look there, it says a special license plate issued for a motorcycle or where we have the new language, multi-purpose vehicle shall not be used or not be less than three inches wide, um, six inches long, and shall contain the international symbol of access and appropriate identification, which may be in lieu of the bucking horse and rider emblem. So um, just we already have that in there for the MPVs and we, because we recognize that, especially like if you look at the new plates right now, they do not have the bucking horse and rider. They say MPV. So um, not needed in my opinion, but hey, committee will rule. Representative Pendergraph. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the lesson. I withdraw that amendment. Well, with, with that committee, what is your what is your pleasure? Question. Or question. Question being called. Can we have somebody move the bill? Been moved. Been, oh, okay. Burger. Burger and seconded. Can we have a roll call vote on that, please? Sure. Thank you. Representative Berger. Aye. Representative Nemec. Aye. Representative Obermuller. Aye. Representative O'Hearn. Aye. Representative Pendergraf. Aye. Representative Smith. Aye. Representative Stivar. Representative Wiley. Aye. Chairman Brown. That's nine ayes do pass. Thank you, Senator Schuler, for the simple little bill. Excellent. Thank you, Jeremiah. Senator Pappas, would you would you please? Come forward. Oh, yeah. Who, who wants? Yeah, I'll, Burger, I'll, you want to carry it? Carry this on the floor. Okay. All yours. Okay. So, uh, Representative or Senator Pappas, yeah. Chairman Wyatt is taking the reins. Ah, great. Senator Pappas, if you would uh, introduce introduce one uh, Senate File One Forty One, please. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, we um, um, just just for a little background, this bill actually was a um, worked in committee last uh, uh, interim, so it was a transportation uh, bill. But you'll notice it's brought to you as a private bill because um, it failed in committee because of a uh, an amendment, uh, a poison pill amendment that was put on it. The bill was a great bill, but um, a former member uh, of the committee put a put an amendment on it that uh, no one liked, and so the bill died. But this is so important to the counties that I felt it was a uh, a bill that needed to come back, and so um, 
with that little bit of history, I'll, I'll explain the bill. This is an act relating to county roads uh, and, ca and county road maintenance. Uh, there, there is a program already in place called a Transportation Technology Transfer Program, Center Program, that's uh, run by the University of Wyoming. Uh, funding goes through YDOT. And what it does, it's a uh, pavement management program. And, and the state, uh, every two years, the entire, uh, the paved roads in the state get uh, uh, surveyed as, as far as condition. Um, they do half one year and half the other year, uh, the next year. Well, that's all paved roads, okay? Uh, so this program's been ongoing. And, and what the program does is there's a <clears throat> consultant that YDOT hires that will uh, that will go out and survey the roads. That data goes to the University of Wyoming to their transportation folks there. They have they've been doing it for years. They they have the expertise to do it, and the recommendations go back to the counties uh, about where to put their county maintenance dollars um, in, in pavements. Well, this bill does the same thing, but now extends it to uh, county roads. And so um, uh, to gravel roads. So if you, if you look at the, uh, the data, we have just under 15,000 miles of county roads in, in the state. 17% of them, 17 point, 0.9% of them are uh, paved. So that leaves a lot of roads that are unpaved. And so the intent with this bill is to extend the, um, the uh, pavement management program to also include a gravel management program so to, to, to manage those gravel roads. So already uh, the um, um, program has a, a cost and that cost is borne by the counties. They tax themselves uh, to a tune of $300,000. And, and actually, so there's some other, I think, fees in there as well. And, and Mr. Riemann can, can address that. But uh, what we're doing in this bill is, um, and, the, and the counties are, are agreeable, they're gonna tax themselves another $300,000. So six hundred thousand dollars per year, and then we're asking for a state match of three hundred thousand um, dollars. So that would then go to uh, the funds are dispersed by the University of Wyoming or by the uh, by YDOT to um, the consultant and 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 then the report, uh, the data from the from the uh, university goes to the counties, and then the counties um, are able to be able to, because they don't have the expertise to decide what they need to do to the roads and how and where. And so um, it's a very valuable project and it helps every county or, or across the state. Uh, my county here, I was I was um, uh, flabbergasted to see how many, how many roads that they have to maintain that are gravel, very, very few paved compared. So this program is very important. So I'll, um, with that said, I'll turn it over to uh, 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 Jeremiah here for any additional comments. Mindy, do we have any questions for the Senator or uh, Mr. Raymond? Representative Stivar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I remember this bill and it only goes to the University of Wyoming. Was that the amendment? Can we open this up to the community colleges? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Reverend Stiver, yeah, if you recall, the amendment uh, was brought uh, to allow the community colleges to participate in the program. Uh, however, uh, the community colleges, number one, don't want to participate in the program, nor do they have the expertise. They don't have the transportation wherewithal and the software and and the uh, um, the requisite knowledge base to do that. Okay, we we've talked to the you know, the community colleges. They they're not interested in this program. So the only only uh, 
uh, folks that can do it is the University of Wyoming uh, mm -hmm. in our state. Follow up. Representative Steibar. What about the private industry? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, private industry probably could do it. I would imagine it would be much more expensive uh, an endeavor, and we've been doing it for years through the University of Wyoming. They're doing it for the for the uh, pavement management program. So we're just extending a program that's already in place. Representative Obermuller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, you know, I mean, just intuitively, a pavement program seems to have a lot of technical scientific aspects to it. And now you're talking about gravel. Can you just tell us about what the level of expertise is required to do gravel management and what that looks like? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Robert Mueller, um, I can't give you all the exact data, uh, the exact science behind it, but we did have a uh, professor from the University of Wyoming in committee uh, during the interim explain the program to us. Um, and there is quite a bit of science behind maintaining gravel roads on, uh, on, on, on um, you know, uh, the base of the road. Uh, I think they use... Uh, uh, some kind of penetrometers to figure out um, the uh, how stable the, the bases are, the the, uh, the alignment of the roads, the uh, the curve of the road, the uh, the uh, drainage of the roads. Uh, again, I couldn't give you all that information. Uh, it was um, um, it was actually fairly an extensive um, um, presentation by the University of Wyoming. What how they would do it and what they would do, and, and um, but I don't, I don't, I can't recall everything that I learned during the interim. Thank you, Representative Obermuller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I can just envision some of even members on the floor that have this, you know, that possibly are you know, in this business. I mean, I had a lot of clients that were in this business, and I can just hear them now saying. That's what we do. I mean, that's our that is our expertise as a private citizen with a construction company. And the county comes to us and says we want to do this project. They are the experts, right? Uh, I don't quite understand where the nexus is with the university here. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, please understand this is not construction. These are not construction dollars. These this this is a this is a pavement, or excuse me, in here, a gravel management plan that's developed by the university. Um, I don't think there's folks out there with that kind of expertise to do that, um, but it's not construction. These are not construction dollars. Representative Obermuller. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So now we're kind of walking where I'm wanting to go with this. Uh, if it's not the construction project or the design of it, what is it exactly, uh, the management plan? Mr. Chairman, could I turn uh, uh, the conversation over to Mr. Riemann? Of course, Mr. Riemann. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Jeremiah Riemann here on behalf of the Wyoming County Commissioners uh, Association. Uh, let me talk to some of these uh, uh, pieces. Uh, the Senator is correct. Uh, the amendment that was brought was intended to open this program up to the community colleges. Uh, another senator confirmed during the testimony that uh, Casper College, in particular, who uh, that uh, representative was interested in bringing this program to, was not interested. They don't have the expertise. It's uh, beyond their capabilities. There is some question about private sector. Uh, let me just explain uh, how this works. So. This money first goes to the Department of Transportation. They then hire a private sector contractor that drives a little scientific vehicle out on all of these roads. It's collecting data. Uh, it's now happening for our pavement uh, system across this data. As the Senator ha mentioned, it happens on one side of the state one year. It happens on the other side of the state the next year. What we're envisioning here is to move this program into uh, the gravel space. So you're gonna see a similar scientific vehicle 
running down county roads, uh, county gravel roads, uh, collecting data. Again, that's a private sector company that's doing that. And they're collecting all of that data. They then bring that back and turn it over to the University of Wyoming. The University of Wyoming synthesizes all that data uh, and tries to make sense of it to then turn it over to the local governments so that we can make better decisions about where we're investing our construction dollars and maintenance dollars. Is that realigning a road so that the corners aren't right? Is it putting up signage? Do we need to do dust abatement? Do we need to deal with uh, washboarding and other issues that can happen with gravel roads? So they're working through all of that scientific analysis uh, uh, to give us uh, positive information to, to work with the private sector and, and doing uh, the work. The university has had their program for decades. They're leaders in this space, and it's our interest to continue to work with them to uh, pursue this program uh, on the gravel uh, side. Hopefully that helps to address some of those questions. I'll, maybe I can give some additional testimony to this issue and why it uh, is of interest to us. Did hand out a document to you. On this side, uh, you'll see uh, some information in that sort of tan uh, set of, uh, or in that tan column is uh, miles of, of uh, county roads uh, out there. And to give you some sense, the counties manage and own, administrate over 50% of all the roads in the state of Wyoming. So more than the federal government, the state municipalities combined, uh, the counties are responsible for. As you see in that blue column, we currently receive data uh, through the pavement management system for just 17% of the roads that we're responsible for. Now let's just assume you're in Niobrara County. That's approximately 3.3 miles that you're getting this data for, but you've got a much bigger system uh, out there that you're not getting data uh, to make, again, those informed decisions. And you can see uh, how that breaks down uh, for many other counties. So we're interested in trying to bring a solution to the 83% of the roads uh, that uh, we manage. Uh, uh, so that's the statistics. Now, in terms of how does this money work, uh, you heard uh, the Senator mention a few uh, dollar figures. On the back of that document, and I apologize for my sticky notes, but is a chart that looks like this. On the bottom left-hand side is the County Road Construction Fund. In current state statute, uh, we do a couple of things. The counties have to contribute, uh, I believe it's $32,000 per, per county uh, into the university's technology transfer program. Uh, and then we capture $150,000 of county money uh, and send that in for the pavement management system before all those fuel dollars are then distributed out to uh, the counties uh, for uh, their construction programs. What we're asking here to do is to capture an additional $150,000 and put that uh, to this program. That's a yearly figure. You heard the Senator uh, talk in biennial figures. We've also asked through this legislation that the state contribute a match of $300,000 because we believe uh, that you all benefit from us maintaining these roads in a much better fashion uh, than maybe we're doing even now because so many of our industries are down these roads, our oil fields, our coal fields, our uh, ag industries. Uh, and so that's what's represented uh, in the legislation here. We hope that you'll support it. And I'm very happy to dive into other parts of this. Uh, but we do see this as a positive thing uh, for our gravel road program, if we can get that stood up. Thank you, Director Eamon. Um, Representative Pentagraph. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, was it Mr. Riemann? Is that correct? Thank you. Uh, I guess my first question would be, what precipitated the perceived need for any involvement at all? Mr. Chairman, uh, Representative Pendergraft, as I've mentioned, we get this data for our, our paved roads uh, currently. It's every other year uh, the counties get this, depending on what part of the state they're in. The counties really appreciate that data 
it's one of the most beloved reports that they receive from a state agency because they can actually then take that uh, data and put it into action on the on the ground working with uh, again the private contractors but the missing link for us has been the gravel roads because there are so many more gravel roads your region is certainly one of those you have far less paved roads than than gravel roads and so the counties have been wanting to get into this space this is our first entree to take a little bit of our money. Admittedly, you'll match it if, if you keep that in there uh, and do uh, better uh, on the gravel side of the equation here moving forward. Representative Pennegra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I want you to understand that I did go back and I watched the interim discussions on this bill. And frankly, I remained unconvinced and do so at this point i'm trying to maintain an open mind look at the possibility there's something here but as you pointed where where i'm from which is not it is somewhat different from the good chairman's county we have a lot of dirt roads but we have a lot of ranchers we have a lot of oil people um, other other industries that travel these roads routinely we have county sheriffs and we have a lot of folks that know these roads intimately as county road workers that have been on the job for many, many years. They know the issues in, in my area. There are a lot of slides, uh, you know, mudslides, things like that. And they pretty much know every inch of those roads and have a pretty good idea what's going on. So I'm, I'm still grappling with why do we need the University of Wyoming's researchers to tell us how to maintain roads that we're already pretty well familiar with. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, if I may answer that, um, it's because of the precious dollars that your county commissioners have. Um, I mean, they're the folks that want this. All your commissioners want this, okay? They have very few dollars to put in um, a, into a big system of gravel roads. And with, yes, they probably know the, the uh, you know, the, the big glaring problems in the roads, but this, this, this data that's being crunched for them will give them a priority listing of where they need to put those dollars, okay? They, they can't get that from um, their uh, uh, gravel maintenance uh, crew, I, you know, the crew knows how to fix things, but but without the data of knowing what is imminent, what's going to be going wrong, where we need to put those dollars, um, uh, it's it's just a it's just a guess for them. And so I, I mean just for them to actually they're ponying up $150,000 now, they're willing to tax themselves another $150,000. To me, that says that these folks, our county commissioners, really think this program is is important. And so um, uh, I just think that to me when I when I hear that, um, I think that it's imperative upon us to act upon their their request to 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 get them the data so they can use their money wisely. And and frankly the the three hundred three hundred thousand dollar match of their three hundred thousand dollars I think is is incumbent upon us as a state. I mean, our main industries, you know, certainly uh, our, our uh, 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 extractive industries use those roads all the time, right? And so does our ag industry. So it's not like um, uh, we don't, as a state, uh, have a, have a, um, we have a buy-in on this as well, I think. So to match the counties, uh, who are already struggling with funding uh, is only logical to me. So it, it it was a good committee bill. I thought I thought that the, I thought to me the the uh, testimony was pretty compelling um, from from the counties that they really need this program. Mr. Chairman, can I respond to that as well? Mr. Chairman, Representative Pendergraft, uh, uh, you know. This is by no means uh, an indictment on our county road and bridge staff or the, the local folks out there. Uh, as the executive director of the Wyoming County Commissioners Association, 
feel it's my responsibility to represent counties as a whole, which includes uh, those individuals. As the Senator said, we have precious dollars. And if I, uh, I could certainly go through and share with each of you how precious those dollars in each of your counties. This is about making sure that we have the proper data to make sure that when we make an investment that it's going to the right place. Uh, and, and so we see this as our responsibility to step up and say, we wanna put a little more skin in the game. Certainly hope that the state will match us on that. Uh, but this is about doing a, a better job than we're already doing uh, across the state. Representative Berger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this is for either one, uh, Senator Pop, Pappas or um, Mr. Riemann. We, we know the benefit for the counties, what, what they want from this. Um, but what, what do you think the benefit for the University of Wyoming is or the students at the University of Wyoming uh, putting this research and this data together? What's their benefit? Mr. Chairman, I'll give you my quick response. I mean, ultimately, this is you know, once that data comes back from those professionals that are out on the ground. Uh, one, we have uh, professionals, Dr. Sabati, uh, who I'd love to give you his presentation so you can see how complex this issue can be. Uh, but he is teaching the next generation of professionals that are ultimately going to be doing this exact work uh, uh, for the benefit of our road system and. And I don't think you get that anywhere else if we send that out to the private sector, not to dis diminish the private sector, but but uh, we're going to ultimately be moving these people into professional opportunities. I have to ditto that. I think that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that that um, it's key for the University of Wyoming to continue this uh, program just for the academic exercise uh, for no, for new uh, new students. Um, uh, and also uh, uh, for the um, in, uh, ongoing health of the transportation uh, uh, part of the College of Engineering. So thank you. Representative Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, two quick questions. One is, do you know how much money the university receives in federal funding for this program? And two, what is the potential cost savings for the counties by doing this program and making the roads better, minimizing the gravel, et cetera. Mr. Chairman, uh, Representative Smith, to your first question, I don't know uh, how much federal funding they receive uh, for uh, the technology transfer program at the university. Uh, for this gravel road management component, this will be entirely new. So this money that we're talking about here would be the first money devoted to the gravel road part of the equation. Uh, uh, to uh, the second question, I wish I had a good answer for you of how much we believe it will ultimately save. I think we won't know that until we can get into actually having that data and being able to deploy uh, that uh, towards uh, projects. But at a minimum, we see that it's worth the hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of county investment uh, uh, to stand up the program, uh, so that we can make better decisions about where we deploy the precious dollars we have. Committee, any other questions for the senator, the director, Representative Stivar? Did you have a question? With that, thank you. Um, if if you'll just if you'll just have a seat and stay with us, do uh, any of the department heads want to come up and speak towards this bill? <clears throat> Please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and committee. My name is Mark Gillette, uh, Chief Engineer for YDOT, and with me is Keith Fulton, the Assistant Chief Engineer, who is the technical expert within YDOT on this program. Uh, YDOT certainly uh, stands in support of our good friends at the county level to uh, help them with any tools necessary to uh, make their uh, 
road system uh, better uh, with with a with a good effective management tool. And I think that uh, if if they're able to do that and uh, better manage their road system, it certainly helps the, us uh, manage our statewide system, highway system in, in conjunction with the county roads. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, we would stand for any questions. Committee, do we have any questions for Mr. Gillette or Mr. Fulton? S seeing none, thank, thank you very much. Would anybody else like to come speak for the bill? Anybody out in the audience will open it up to the public now. I think all the departments are done. Well, I asked. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, my name is Mike Smith, representing the University of Wyoming. I am woefully ill-prepared uh, to be sitting in this chair uh, today. I had not planned to, to speak on behalf of the bill. But uh, so many of the comments and questions uh, surrounded the university. I just wanted to let you know we're here. We're um, uh, monitoring this effort closely. We have this expertise we can take on um, this role. Uh, we have this long partnership with the counties that we treasure. You know, we hear a lot of uh, comments around the state sometimes. Where's the university in my community? Here's a great example right here. Um, there are federal dollars to Representative Smith's uh, a question. I don't have that figure. I'll get it for you. Uh, should we move forward or, or either way, I'll get you that information. This is uh, the LTAP program, a local technical assistance program that, that is funded through the federal government. So, so this center does a, a lot more than, than the, the asphalt uh, program the counties work with and, and, and will continue to do that. We work with industry day in and day out. We provide all the trainings industry needs for their workers. Uh, the flaggers that you see through, throughout the state uh, during construction season, they get certified at this program. So th this is a great example of kind of a combination of federal, uh, private, and, and university resources that, that impact uh, your communities and communities throughout the state. And again, I'm not an expert um, on the technical aspect of what happens here, but I, I would I welcome the questions. I'll get you the data that you want and, and apologize in advance for my inability to answer uh, the questions I now stand for. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Committee, or do we have any questions? Representative O'Hearn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Going off of what Representative Berger was asking, how many uh, students are in the Transportation Technology Transfer Center program? 10, 20? Hundred. Yeah, and and you know. um, again, I'll I'll get you an exact response. My my impression is from uh, uh, meeting with Dr. Sabati is the center itself is staffed by professionals. Uh, um, then the students that take engineering courses from Dr. Sabati and his colleagues are the, are the beneficiaries. I'm not aware of whether or not. Um, students, grad students or undergrad students actually participate um, in, in the data crunching. I, I suspect some master's level and, and some uh, graduate students do, but um, I really, I, I probably have said more, you know, uh, because I, I'm in danger of giving you incomplete in information. But I will say that he's a nationally known, Dr. Sabati is a nationally known expert in this field. And, and having him at the university benefits our students greatly um, for their exposure to his expertise. Thank you. Committee, any other questions for Mr. Smith? With that, thank you, thank thank you very you. much. Anybody else from the public wanna come up and speak to this bill? Do we have anybody online? Committee? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the bill. Second. We have a... Motion to move the bill from Representative Brown, Chairman Brown, second from Representative Berger. We have no question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I know there's a lot of concern and it sounds like maybe even some consternation about this bill, but I will say uh, the amount of time that was spent on this during the interim um, was a significant amount. Um, and it wasn't this past interim, this was from two years ago. Um, Committee worked this bill. It was this interim, you're right, sorry. Um, it, it was a significant bill. Um, there's there's a lot at stake here. 
And when you look at the 90, 83% of the roads that we're not getting any data on, you're really just asking your county road managers to throw a dart at their map and hope that they're picking the right road to, to fill in and grade and do the uh, mag chloride or whatever the case may be uh, to try to keep their, their roads in the right shape. And this particular bill provides them the data and the analysis that they will need to better utilize the taxpayers' dollars that they're utilizing in their districts or in their counties to put the right information forward. And one of the biggest things that I remember from this discussion was is also came from YDOT about the pavement management program showing the deterioration and how, how much harder it is once a road starts deteriorating and it gets past a certain point it becomes three, four, five times as much money to replace that road. Hopefully with this funding, $300,000 is, I, it's a lot of money, but it's a drop in the bucket in our state budget. And hopefully this can provide our counties with the information that they truly need to make multitude of decisions on which roads they're gonna be taken care of. So I appreciate the Senator bringing this forward. Um, I did not co-sponsor and it was only because I had too many bills co-sponsored and I was not sure I could give it due diligence over here. I'm going to do my best to carry it anyway, since you don't have a, a sponsor, uh, Senator, but, um, you know, committee vote, vote how you will. But I will say that this is, this is one of those things that when the county is saying, hey, we want to pony up some of our money and this, if the state's willing to help us out, this would ultimately, this is going to save us down the road from the state having to pay for these roads, because this is going to be a, could be a catastrophic issue in the future. So. I'll be an I vote on this. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Any other discussion? Representative Berger. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I see benefit, 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 and in particularly uh, with, with our students at the university and our partnerships there, whether it's one student in the program or 45. I love it. Um, I, wa I too watch the interim, and uh, I just keep seeing, you know, learning is is – saving to me and keeping those students in Wyoming and and looking at careers that uh, could be potential careers in our counties and hopefully saving them because they did so much work like this. And I appreciate uh, the good work from uh, uh, our our counties and, and the good work from the University of Wyoming. So yes, I'm in favor of this bill right now. Anyone else? Representative Obermuller? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just... Uh... Wondering if we can go to the mic on the floor and say categorically that this expertise does not reside in our counties, that we don't have the expertise out in the field, and that we need the university to do this. Uh, so if someone is on this panel is ready to make that case so we can follow, because we're going to have people that get up there, and they're going to say that the counties are just trying to shuffle this off, that they have the expertise to do it. We have to be able to counter that. I'm just wondering, um, I just want to hear what other members say about that particular issue. Representative O'Hearn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do remember this bill in the interim. And I like to, I, I'm glad that the county is coming in and putting more skin in the game. And I think that answers your question, Representative Overmuller, that the counties all want this to proceed in this direction for the expertise down at the Wyoming, University of Wyoming. Thank you. Representative Pentagraf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm afraid I'm still very skeptical. Understand that you go a little bit west of the town of Thermopolis, there's a big mess. It's called Anchor Dam. And we had highly technical people come in and explain what a benefit this would be and that they could build this dam and it would be a beautiful place to to hang out and it would also storing the water would be a good thing and a lot of the locals who had been in that country for many many years said it's never going to work they said this strata around here is all honeycombed and it's never going to work and if you go there now water they've got this monster concrete dam built in a beautiful spot and the water has never even come near the spillway 
And I tell that story just to say that I have a lot of confidence in the people that have been in and around these roads for a long time. They've driven them, they've worked on the same areas, they've understand from years past what needs to be done. And I just, I remain unconvinced that this is necessary. I do understand how certain people in different positions um, would look at this as an opportunity. I'm, I'm sorry, but I haven't been convinced and I'll be a no. With that being said, I would like to, <clears throat> I would like to speak to this bill. So my background is in um, construction and we do do work similar to this. And with my experience in my county, um, they don't, they don't actually do, do the design. They look into it, they oversee it. They will outsource to, to different engineering firms and stuff. But those engineering firms will look at this data created from this bill to, to better know how well suited different um, means or me mean, means and measures for that project would be. Um, another thing would be is there's always new things coming to the construction field until recently, you know, it was kind of frowned upon to use um, recycled aggregates. Now it's, I think it's widely readily used across the state and uh, a program like this will help that innovation. And it will also help give the counties this information they need to do these projects cost effectively. Thanks. Representative Stivar. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna speak against the bill. Uh, I happen to know somebody that used to be the road and bridge from your area. Went over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they know their roads. <clears throat> they know, and they've already got or on a cycle when they need to go out and grade it. Uh, <clears throat> my experience uh, with my regular job is I've seen it so many times. They'll come in and some expert says we need to put 48-inch culverts in to replace 124-inch. We put four of them in. They're still using the one little 24-inch. The water still goes through. We've never had a problem. Uh, I think this is a, just a waste, so I'll be a no. Committee, any other discussion? Question. Question being called. Roll call vote, please. Representative Berger? Aye. Representative Nemec? Aye. Representative Obermuller? Representative O'Hearn? Aye. Representative Pendergraf? No. Representative Smith? No. Representative Stivar? Representative Wiley? Chairman Brown? Aye. That's six ayes, three noes. Do pass with the amendment. Did you get the amendment? Did they just had some spelling? Or oh, that was not moved. So I will take that as committee of the whole. So that is, that will not go with this. Um, this will have, it's it's a technical correction. Uh, it says the transportation department instead of the Wyoming Department of Transportation. So um, that was my fault. I should have remembered that, sorry. Um, that being said, this has the appropriation built into it. Will you be carrying this up in appropriations when they re-refer it? Okay, I will, I will re-refer it this afternoon uh, as, as long as it's read in. If not, it'll be read in tomorrow for, um, and then they basically hear it that night. So should be good to go there. So thank you. And then I'll take chairmanship back over. Thank you, Representative Wiley, for running an efficient meeting. Um, committee, I want to take just a next few minutes. Thank you, Senator Pappas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Eamon. Um, take the next few minutes here. We are coming up. We will not have a meeting on Thursday. We have no more bills left. So thank you guys for clearing out the Senate files and getting our sticky fingers all over them. Um, we did some good work here, but I do want to touch base with you guys all. We, we've we already announced that you need to have your interim committee topics um, submitted by Friday. Next Monday, I believe, is that correct? We have our, our joint meeting, and it will be, I believe, I can't remember, six. So I can never remember which side we're going to be on, but um, we will be over there having the joint discussion. And I just wanna check with the committee if anybody wants to talk about their ideas right now. Um, if we have any members from the public that would like to submit some ideas or discussions up front so they still have a little bit of time to 
sit and you know marinate in our brains before Friday, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So um, committee, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. You be very flexible it's here. So if anybody has anything they'd like to discuss um, public, please come forward and or committee members speak up. Nothing. All right. This is for interim. Interim. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a couple of things that I'd like to talk about. Um, first being property tax exemption for gold star parents or spouses. Okay. Have you submitted? Um, not yet. You have not submitted any of this. Okay. So you and I have talked about this. Why don't you go ahead and explain a little bit more on this? Um, well, right now, Mr. Chairman, um, property tax exemption goes toward disabled veterans or combat veterans that served in certain areas. Um, those gold star parents who lost their veteran who would have applied or got gotten this don't get anything out of it. So it's just a another thank you that I think the state can hand off to that. Okay. Any discussion? Representative Pendergraft. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing that subject up. I think that's an excellent concept. Agree. Anybody else? Okay, so we'll definitely consider that one. Make sure that you get this submitted online through the form. Um, otherwise, it will. It, we cannot consider it if it is not submitted. So, do uh, you have a few more? Oh, uh, no. Go yep. ahead. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the second thing I'd like to uh, look into is uh, tuition assistance for our Wyoming schools, for the University of Wyoming, as well as the community colleges. For 100% disabled veterans. Okay. So we can definitely consider that. That's another one that you and I have had the discussion on. Any, any discussion on that? Okay. Yeah. Representative Stiver. If they're 100% total, total and permanent, or 100% through the VA, they get they get VA voc rehab to go to school. So, to me. Uh, the feds are already paying for it. The VA is already paying for this. Yeah. All right. We will consider this as a potential topic. Um, this is really just a discussion to make sure that if you guys have any ideas, bring them forward, kind of get a rough understanding of what your house counterparts are thinking about it. Um, by no means will any of these guaranteed come through, but we absolutely will have the discussion on Monday. So please make sure that they're ready to go. Uh, Representative Pendergraft. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm I'm assuming, and I know the risk involved in that, that we'll be talking about the Cowboy Academy over the interim. It does sound like we will be having a small briefing on that as well. Um, I had some information emailed to me this morning. Um, I will tell you right now, I know the governor's office is um, doing some research on it as well, whether or not there's potential uh, relocation for the um, program, what that ultimately looks like. They're doing some due diligence work on that. But I do know that um, the general and uh, Colonel Smith, retired Colonel Smith, will be bringing us some information on on Monday on that. So I would highly suspect that'll be at least a discussion. Yes, uh, Representative Berger. Uh, for our Department of Transportation and even all departments, but I want to know um, <clears throat> specifically how how our benefits and uh, the benefits that we give our employees. How they stand out and what what they're doing for our employees and uh, at least keeping them around and also attracting um, uh, new employees to our state or attracting young people to uh, apply and and get into YDOT. That's that's what I I would like to do. And and is there anything else that we can start looking into? What what benefits are really helping them and which ones are not? Director, you and I have certainly had plenty of discussions on this, so we might just have a primer from you, um, what we've discussed over the past six years, if you would. <laughs> uh, I think that would be probably most beneficial for the for the committee as they go forward. Uh, committee, one of the things that you guys did see, we had a bill that was assigned to us. It was one of my personal bills um, that we will be working heavily with um, the, the department on is electric vehicle um, taxes what that looks like, how 
how we've kind of created an inequity with um, the way that we tax them right now. It's kind of a hodgepodge of the way that we do it. Um, so we're going to try to find a way to uh, fix that issue. We're also going to try to make sure that we have clarification and um, guidance right now with the way that the director uh, may or may not have the authority to tax at electric vehicle charging stations. So we want to make sure we clear some of that up. Um, and then I've also spoken with the director. We want to open up um, the uh, fuel tax uh, statutes, not so much to change the fuel tax itself or look at anything like that, but to make sure we clean up some of the uh, language that's in the blue or in the green books right now. Uh, we've got some kind of some goofy stuff that, again, that's been hodgepodge from years in the past, and, and they'll be submitting that, bringing that forward to us on Monday as well. So, uh, Representative Stivar. Yes, Mr. Chairman, there'll be some, uh, I'll be submitting some of the requests I've got from the uh, Towing Association. I haven't got them yet, but I have had a phone call. Excellent. That. Okay. That's always a fun one to try to try to clean up. That out there. I think anybody who's out there is kind of gritting their teeth, ready to see if we can fix that one. But uh, appreciate you letting me know there. Representative Obermuller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a study done at YDOT uh, related to the underfunding issues of their program. I think it would be good to have follow up on that and just see what the status of our funding for that agency is right now. Well, we've got some great FMRs now, but uh, <laughs> um, director, I think take that as an action item. Um, I don't know what that'll ultimately look like, whether or not we'll consider that as a full interim topic or maybe just a, yeah, yeah, we'll see what that looks like and I'll visit with the other co-chair and we'll kind of go from there. Anything else, committee? I'd like to try to get you guys out since we didn't have any lunch. I'd like to get you out so where you can at least run across the street to Taco John's if you want. But uh, seeing nothing else, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, and we will see you all Monday for uh, interim topic at noon.